it's Angie from Whip Green Girl, and we're going to be making something in my kitchen again today. It's probably one of my more popular DIY skincare recipes that all my friends ask me to make for them all the time. It's my whipped body lotion uh, using rosehip seed oil, or rosehip oil. Um, now, it's going to be a simpler version. I'm going to dull it down to four ingredients so that it'll be easier for everyone to make, but truly, it is great for all skin types. It goes into skin super easily, absorbs really quickly, and you get all the benefits of rosehip seed oil at the same time, making this a super duper amazing moisturizer. Why do you like rosehip seed oil? Well, it's anti-aging, it fades scars, it helps with sun damage, it's just one of those overall carrier oils that just makes your skin feel beautiful again. Um, now, where do I get mine? That's always a good question. I always like to say I get my rosehip seed oil specifically from Eleven Rose. We all know that I'm a huge supporter of their carrier oils. Why? Because they're 100% pure, nothing synthetic, no crap in there. You're getting a 100% great oil for your skin. Now, uh, the expiry on rosehip seed oil, you got about a year. It doesn't really have a smell. And this bottle would sell for $30 regularly, but it's on sale for about $15 right now on lovenrose.com, so go check that out. Since we're blending um, a face lotion too, because I want this you to be able to use this on your face, you'll notice that it's void of any wax, no beeswax, calendulox, nothing like that, because wax can sometimes clog pores on your face, so never make a DIY face lotion with wax in it basically is what that's all about. Now, please stick to the measurements. It took me years to figure out uh, DIY, this recipe, but if you stick to um, what I'm saying to use, then don't worry, you won't have any problems. Uh, but I find that because it is this type of whip lotion, it can be really finicky and you really gotta stick to what I'm calling for. Now optional always are essential oils if you want to scent it. I'm not gonna use any today just because I want you guys to get the gist of how to make this amazing base um, lotion. Uh, you could literally do so much with this if you get the hang of it. What you're gonna need, supplies, ingredients. A double boiler pan, you're gonna need an electric mixer, spatula, a kitchen scale, that's going to come really in handy. Um, for your uh, like ingredients that you're going to need to actually make the recipe, you need 150 grams of shea butter, one and a half tablespoons of coconut oil, three tablespoons of sweet almond oil, one tablespoon of rosehip seed oil. Essential oils for scenting, again, um, are always optional. And for the carrier oils, I mean, if you don't like sweet almond oil, then play around, use whatever you have. If you don't like coconut oil either, then use another one. I like to also use often um, aloe butter. It's another one of my favorites um, for making my lotions. Now let's get mixing. Directions. This is the fun part. You're going to put, obviously, your water in your double boiler pan. I've already done it, so this has been heating up while I was talking, so it's already really, really hot. You don't want it, obviously, too hot because you're heating up butters, but that's why a double boiler is ideal because you won't burn anything. If you use just a regular pot, you're probably going to burn your butters in it, which I've done before. Um, now we're going to heat the butters the first uh, two ingredients, so your shea butter and your coconut oil, you want to heat those until they're completely clear. So I've already measured out on a kitchen scale my 150 grams of shea butter. Now you need a kitchen scale, why? Because I don't know how anyone else would be able to measure this shea butter in a measuring cup. As you can see, it's like these big chunks. Um, so it's really difficult. So I went to good old Canadian Tire in Canada and pick this kitchen scale up for I think like 15 bucks or something totally worth it I've had it for years and it just keeps on going so we have the shea butter in the double boiler that is going to start melting away we'll put the coconut oil in there too so for coconut oil it's one and a half tablespoons so there's one and a half And you can use refined or unrefined coconut oil. 
obviously refined means that it doesn't smell like anything and unrefined means that like mine it smells like yummy coconuts like a pina colada so it's a personal choice I love the smell but some people just really detest uh, the smell of coconut oil so if that's the case for you just go for the unrefined or ref sorry if you don't like coconut smell you want to go for the refined kind so you want to have a whisk you need one of these to make sure that your butters are melting away. So you can see the shea butter is like slowly melting. It's getting there. Perfect. Shea butter is melted. So it is completely clear, 100%. Nothing left in there. Shut the heat off. Pour the shea butter melted coconut oil into your glass bowl. Do, do, do. And now is when you want to add in your rosehip seed oil. I don't like to heat it too much. We're going to put in one tablespoon. And now we're going to put this in the fridge and we're going to let it cool. And I'm going to keep taking it out every like 10 minutes or so and giving it a good beating with my wick. And <clears throat> that's when we get into kind of the whipping process and you'll see how when the lotion cools down, that it'll slowly um, lose its clear color. First 10 minutes from the fridge. What we're trying to do here is get this lotion cooled down. I know some people put it in ice baths and things like that. I just put it in the fridge, kind of go back to it every now and then. You can even be lazy and just like leave it in the fridge and stir it while it's still in the fridge, you know? Um, but what we're trying to do is get it like white again. Like I keep saying we don't want this to be clear anymore. I can still feel that it's hot. So back in the fridge it goes. So it's been another 10 minutes and as you can see, the sides are starting to get like a little bit thicker. It's starting to lose a bit of its clear consistency, but it's definitely not there yet. So back in the fridge it goes. So this has probably been about 30 to 40 minutes. Look at this. This is not a clear lotion anymore. This is a stable lotion. So it's really hardened up on me. And that's what you want. I'm just going to scrape it with the spatula, lift it all off the bottom because you don't want anything stuck off the sides before you start whipping this. Because now we're going to go into the whipping phase. We'll get that started. So we've now removed the shea butter from the fridge, like I said it is no longer clear and we're going to start whipping it which is the fun part. What you got to do now is when you're whipping it you have to slowly add in your sweet almond oil, the tablespoons, three tablespoons that this recipe calls for, but you have to slowly add it in whenever you're whipping with your electric mixer. Don't like chuck it all in there at once, I find it doesn't mix as well. So if you just drip it in, you'll see it makes a big difference. Let's start whipping this stuff, see how it goes.
voila. Here's your fluffy, fresh looking yummy lotion. Literally, it looks like you could eat it. It looks like whipped cream. So it just fluffs up. The more you whip it, you could even get it even fluffier than the consistency if you'd like it. Transfer to jars. And you got yourself a beautiful, wonderful DIY body lotion that you've made all by yourself at home in a few minutes. All done, we have now transferred the product to an amber jar. This will keep for approximately six months, the expiry date on this lotion. Use up the goodness while you have it. Um, after applying to, if you have any excess oil, I always like to follow up with a great rose toner. That's what a toner will do. It'll soak up any of the extra oils on your face and just leave you feeling ha. <sighs> Like that. That's how your skin will feel, literally. This lotion is also temperature sensitive, so please remember, don't leave it in your purse on like a hot summer day. You will come back with uh, lotion soup in the bottom of your purse because it will literally like coconut oil would, it'll just melt back to the liquid if it ever is exposed to really high heat, so be careful of that. Thank you all for watching my latest DIY skincare share. You can find me now on Instagram, I'm happy to say I just joined, so I'll make sure to leave that link below if you could all go and follow me. It took me a long time to get on there, I don't know why, maybe because I'm a Pinterest fanatic. But yeah, go check me out on, on Instagram now. If you missed any of these recipe details, don't worry, you can always go to whippedgreengirl.com, click on the DIY skincare tab, and you will see this recipe is on there, and you can find all of the ingredients, everything that was listed here will be on there. Thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate your support. If you could drop me a like, maybe a comment, even better, please subscribe, like I say, your skin will thank you. New DIY skincare video coming hey, next from Monday as here. usual. And thank you, bye! So guess what? Is it ever? DIY skincare share. What are we talking about? Hey,